two sections are all about fractions. Um, we are going to start with multiplying and dividing because that's actually quite a bit easier and less work. And then in 8.3, we're going to do adding and subtracting. Um, the only reason it's more work to add and subtract is you have to have common denominators. So that's, that's what creates more work. Um, multiplying and dividing fractions works like normal fractions. Uh, the difference is we're no longer doing numbers. It's, it's all like letter stuff. Hi. Definitely can't hear anything. Do you know how to get to the calculators? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I wrote at the bottom. Rational expression means fractions. Okay, so oh, you didn't have to write that part down. Do you want me to go back? Yeah. Okay. There we go. I don't know if I like wearing pants again. This room feels super hot now. It's like the first day after summer when you finally have to wear pants again. And it's the worst experience ever. Maybe you guys aren't accustomed to that, but. Yeah, I know. It, this room is weird. It goes from hot to freezing, like within the same day. Basically, for June, July, and August, I don't wear socks or pants. It's straight shorts and sandals. And then coming back to school and having to dress normal is just a killer. Having to do a real job again. Are we done here? Okay. You know, these notes are saved. Oh, I forgot to set it up in Schoology, didn't I? Okay, well, that's fine. We're gonna do the notes together. I'll put them up after. <gasps> hey, I don't have the shame clip ready to play. How's that, how's that better? I mean, I, I realize it's educational in a sense. Can I change, friend? Yeah. Excellent. You guys took a really long time writing down stuff that you didn't need to write down. Okay. Okay, so here, we're gonna start with this. This is basically kind of a refresher. Um, we have done these before in Algebra 1, but it's just been so long that I figured you needed a refresher. Hi, good morning. That's not too bad today. We got 10 minutes. Okay, you ready to roll? Yeah. Excellent. Um, 51. 5-1. Uh, that's Maya. You are 5-1. <clears throat> I kind of like this now that you guys don't know what number you are again. It's not scary. I know. <laughs> uh, it's fun for me, not for you. Right. Uh, okay, so Maya. Our goal here is to simplify the fractions. So it's, it's very similar to if we had a fraction like 4, 6, that we would divide the 4 and the 6 by 2 because they were both even. Um, looking at 3x7 and 2x4, are they both being multiplied by a like thing? Yep. No, that's correct. So they're both being multiplied in x. The top one is being multiplied by x seven times. The bottom one is being multiplied by an x four times, because that's what a power means. So we're allowed to reduce and cancel anything that's alike for multiplication. So if they're both are being multiplied by x four times, 
we are going to cancel that. And then the top would remain with three of them. Is this how you guys learned it? Or did you guys learn it to su subtract the powers? Subtract the powers? I can do that too. Doesn't really matter to me. I'll erase that if you want. Because uh, I could see by the look on some of you that that didn't really click. So it sounds like the way you guys learned it, that if you are dividing by like bases, you subtract the powers. That's fine, that works too. So x7 minus four would give you x3 on the top of the fraction. Because when you subtract the powers, the answer goes on the top. Would that still be three x uh, cubed? Correct, the three and the two are still there. Okay. So the only thing we were focused on was the x. Yep. So the simplified final answer would be three x cubed over two. Because those were the only things that remained after we reduced, canceled. Bring back some memories at least, probably. Okay. Um, B, maybe not nearly as much. Does B bring, B bring fear a little bit? Anxiety? Hadley, who are we going to scare? Um, 34. 34 is Andrew. Andrew, I don't know if you remember it or not. <clears throat> if not, I can certainly kind of do the top one to refresh you. Do you remember how to factor these? Um, um, yeah, because like, just like both on one side or two at the same time. Here, I can do the top one. Okay, that works. Yep, otherwise so, um, I, can, I can guide you. If it's negative three and it goes into, wait. So you're looking to see what multiplies to negative three and adds to negative two. Okay, uh, negative three and positive one. Good. So when we're doing factoring and there's no number in the front, these are the easy term factoring ones. Uh, your teacher may have referred to it as something different. I think I called them three term easy. Um, what multiplies to the last number adds to the middle number. So negative three plus one. Because negative three and positive one would multiply to be negative three, add to be negative two. Now the whole reason we were factoring this is the only things you can cancel are multipliers. So we're rewriting the top as multipliers. That's what those parentheses mean. We're, we're multiplying them. And if something is multiplied, we can cancel it. Um, sure, let's have somebody do the bottom one. Andrew did a great job on top. Uh, Jaden is not here. Oh, you've already got the system down. You knew where to look, huh? Uh, nope, Grant. Yeah, I know, it's goofy. There's, I couldn't think of a good way to set up the dice because it didn't fit right. Do you remember how to factor the bottom? I can, I can guide you if you want some help. So, yeah, yeah, x, positive four and positive one are the two numbers, so we would write it as x plus four, x plus one. Good. Now the whole top and whole bottom is written as multipliers, and our goal is to see if top and bottom is being multiplied by anything alike. And I, I'm assuming it's relatively obvious to you what's alike. But both the top and bottom are being multiplied by x plus 1. Is it too sloppy written like this? Do you want me to rewrite the line with the factors? I didn't know if anybody needed to see it that way. So the only thing that remains after we cancel out the common multiplier is x minus 3 over x plus 4. <clears throat> okay, now if you read, oh, go ahead. Is, is that number, like the x minus 3 number, always going to be the same as that last number? Because the last number on top and bottom is also Total coincidence. Um, it was coincidence on this one because when I set up the problem, I made x plus 1 the common multiplier. So 
they're both being multiplied by one. So that's why it was the same number. But good observation. If you guys read the directions, I skipped half of it. And I don't know if you saw that part or not. It says, identify any x values for which the expression is undefined. That part might be relatively new to you. We're supposed to figure out, are there any numbers that we couldn't put in place of x in the original problem? Not the simplified answer, but the original problem. Like if I'm looking at a, do you remember what number we can't divide by? You can't divide by zero. So on these fraction problems, rational expressions, that's the real name. If it says identify any x values for which the expression is undefined, this is what it's asking for. So what number would I have to put in place of x to make the denominator become zero? Like if I put one in place of x, the denominator would be two. If I put two in place of x, uh, the denominator would be 32. I can't put zero in place of x. Because if I did, this would say two times zero, which is zero. So I would say x cannot be zero. This is probably new to you, I'm guessing, right? Anna, you don't look awake yet. Oh, sorry, I am. <laughs> do, you, do you guys want me to explain that more, different? I'll, let me look at the next problem. Maybe it'll make more sense. If I'm looking at the one that's written in blue, the original problem had x plus 4 and x plus 1 in the denominator. So there's two numbers I couldn't put in place of x. I couldn't use negative 4, because negative 4 plus 4 would become 0. 0 times anything would be 0. Like if you're using a calculator, you can't type in 5 divided by 0, because it'll just say error or something like that. So it's not allowed. So we're trying to look for any numbers that we couldn't put in a calculator, essentially, in place of x. If I couldn't use negative 4, what's the other one going to be? Negative 1. Negative 1. Yeah, right. So for factoring, it's always going to be the opposite number of the denominator? Yeah. Yeah. So there, there is an official way to solve it. The official way to solve it is to make it equal to 0. And then you subtract, like, the opposite number does it. But I was going to wait till we got to a little more difficult ones to show that. Now, now you guys can see possibly why I was OK with hurrying up Friday so I could give extra time for this section. Yeah. Hey, did you have them that whole time? I did, yeah. I stopped having to talk to about uh, films, but she, she changed it. You need to come to the What? One plus one is. Oh, they definitely need your help today. Yeah. Uh, that's 11. You got to help that one. You got an Alex in here. You're going to need a lot of help. Oh, boy. Wow. Come on, Blue. Um, I already forgot what I was saying. Should we go on to the next page? Sure. Okay. Do you want to try these two on your own or not? No. Okay. You're not, you're not at that stage yet. All right. So I guess the real question, which Alex was Mr. Brookins ripping on? You or the one that he walked in? Blue? Blue? Why? When he was the most son, I called blue instead of something else. It was a blue.
All right. I like Alexito. I like Alexito much better. I should tell him. I should tell him how much you hate that name, and he'll probably use that instead. So they would stay in the final answer. But like, if you could factor it out, where would it go? It reduces. It goes away. Yeah. Okay, Hadley. Um, Onyx. You are two six. <clears throat> um. Is there anything that is being multiplied on top and bottom in common that you were able to identify? Okay, so um, did you do you like subtracting them or just canceling? Okay, so we'll subtract these two since we can subtract their powers and that gives us X9 on the top. Okay, what about the 16 and eight? Okay, good. So I can divide the top and bottom by eight and write 2 and 1, or you can just do 16 divided by 8 is 2, and then write the answer on top. It's the same thing. Either one works. Because when I go to write my next answer, I would say 2 and x9 are on the top, and technically I have a 1 on the bottom, but I don't need to write divided by 1. Go ahead and ask it out loud if you want. Okay. So if you're looking at 16 and 8, um, 8 goes into both of them. So we divided the top and the bottom by 8. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, who answered again? Onyx? If you were able to, is there any numbers that we can't put in place of x in this problem? Is there any number you can't use in place of x? Zero. So then we would say x cannot be 0. Um, when you have the same base with different powers and they're being divided, you can subtract them. So I did, I did 11 minus 2. I was just trying not to fill it up with too much stuff to make it look confusing, but oh well. Um, very good, though. Very good. OK. One more person, and they'll probably need my help to factor the bottom. Um, 59. <clears throat> what? Maybe Six. 56. 56. <laughs> it took me a little bit to, yeah, it took me a little bit to register that one. Um, that's the one desk we have empty. Oh. <laughs> 32. 32. Reardon, do you remember how to factor it when there's a number in the front? We did two main methods in class. And then honestly, um, I'm sure some of you had a different teacher for this trimester. Um, and it's possible you learned a different way to factor too. <clears throat> Whichever way you remember is fine. Do you remember how to do that or do you want me to kind of guide it? Okay, so if we have let me go off on the side and do this. If we have to factor and we have a number in front of the x squared, one of the methods that we learned was that you multiply the two outer numbers and you get negative 12 for this problem. And then we want to look for the pair that multiplies to negative 12 but adds to 1. So it's similar to the other ones, but it's just got a lot more steps. These are, uh, these are more annoying. So if some of you can think of that combo, that's good. It's going to be 4 and negative 3. So I'm going to put 4 and negative 3 instead of a 1. If, if this method is terrible, I can show you the other method, too. That's fine. Yep. 
Some people like this method because it works every time and you don't have to like try to do a lot in your head. So this is the method where you kind of split it in half. The first half each have an x in common. So I would factor out the x. The second half each have a negative 1 in common. So I would factor out negative 1. 3x plus 4 is the common factor. And the things in front of them are x minus 1. I know I, I know I'm doing this fast. It's we've already we've already technically done this, but I I know a lot of you probably forgot the steps. I just don't have time to take forever on it. So I can factor it into 3x plus 4 and x minus 1. The other method is guess and check. Some people love that, and no, that's fine. The way the guess and check works is I know that the first spot in the parentheses is going to multiply to make 3x squared. And there's only one way to multiply to get 3. And that's 3 and 1. That's the only way I'm going to get 3x squared. And then it's called guess and check because I'm just going to put different numbers in place of 4 till it works. So 4 can be 4 and 1 or 2 and 2. Doesn't matter which one we try first. Let's do 4 and 1. I'm going to try that and see if it works. That gives me 12 and 1. That did not work. So then I will switch the 4 and 1 around to see if that works. That gives me 3 and 4. I can make 1 out of 3 and 4 because I can do positive 4 and negative 3. That's called guess and check method. You'll notice I got the exact same answer that I did when I did it by the other method. Some of your teachers, I think, had you use like a X. If you like that method, use that method. I've just never liked that method myself. If I remember correctly, don't you put like the 3X squared here, negative 4 here? And then what do you put on top and bottom? Isn't it, isn't it the 4 or x minus 3x? Yeah. And then what do you do? I don't think that's right. Oh. All right, then I'll stop trying to show that. I, I, know, I, just, I know there's other methods to factoring these, and you're welcome to use whichever method you learned and whatever. No, that's fine. Like, you don't have to explain it. I just, I don't know, that method never has clicked with me, so I usually don't teach it that way, but. <clears throat> Who got rolled again? Gurdon, was that you? Okay. I wasn't expecting you to factor this, because I figured it might be hard to remember. Um, do the top and bottom, are they being multiplied by anything in common now? Yeah. So because they have this in common, I can factor it or cancel it or reduce it out. What would be the final answer that I would write for this one? Close. What happens when something reduces out? What does it leave that we normally don't need to write? So it doesn't actually cancel out. It doesn't like go away completely. Technically, what happens is it leaves a 1. When you reduce something, it leaves a 1, and we normally don't need to write that. But it's the only thing on the top. So the final answer is going to be 1 over x minus 1. Yeah, because if you just write x minus 1, that's a very different answer than the x minus 1 being on the bottom. Basically, the x minus 1 is on the bottom of the fraction, and we have to say that it's on the bottom of the fraction and so you can't leave the top empty. I mean, that's, that's really the only reason. So how did you get the one to leave the top? If I have 6 over 6 as a fraction, mm -hmm. I would divide top and bottom by 6. Okay. 
and then that would become 1 over 1, which is 1. <clears throat> Okay, I can definitely tell you guys are, are having trouble remembering the factoring part of this. Is that correct? Accurate? Okay, why don't I skip the part for right now that's identifying x values for which it's undefined? I don't, I don't know if I want to add on top of the factoring. It looks like you guys need a lot of help remembering factoring on its own. I'll just leave it as that for now. What time is it? I do have a watch. I'm not even going to bring up the fact that I bet two thirds of this class can't even read that clock. Yeah, I'm serious. A lot of people can't read that. Because they don't teach it anymore. A lot of people don't use analog clocks anymore. It's like cursive. You forget it if you don't use it. Did she deserve it? No. Oh, okay. That's not that's bad. I shouldn't ask that. That's never true. Okay, mental break time over. I was giving you a little bit before we moved on because you guys looked like you needed it. That last factoring one looked like it was more difficult than you were ready for. Okay, Hadley. 23. 23. Uh, Rocio. Any help on factoring top or bottom, your choice. Because that's, that's our goal, since the only way we can reduce and cancel is to factor it so it's written as multipliers. Let's focus on top or bottom first. Um, we can't cancel the x. Oh, the x squared? Yeah. That's good you brought that up. I didn't even think of doing that. This is 100% the number one error that students will make is they will try to do this. You cannot do that. The reason you can't do that is the only way you can cancel something is if it's being multiplied towards the whole top and multiplied towards the whole bottom. So like the x squareds are being added and subtracted. So we can only cancel from multiplying. Okay, so looking at the top, we need to factor it. Um, did they have anything in common? That was usually the first thing you check. On the top. Yeah, we're just looking at the top for right now. We're gonna do them separately. Good. They both have an x in common, so that's a greatest common factor. So I can write it like this. Anything in common can be written in front of a parentheses. And then I don't know if you guys do this in your head by now, or do you still write it out? Do you want me to write out how to do that again? Anybody else? Okay. So dividing by x would give me a 2 and a regular x. Thank you. What? Sure. <clears throat> Do you think you can handle the bottom one? Okay. Three terms starting with an x squared. So you're looking to see what multiplies to negative 2, but then adds to negative 1. And if, if you have trouble doing them in your head, essentially the way that you would do this is write them out and write out the different ways you can multiply to negative 2. So you can have 1 and negative 2 or negative 1 and 2. That's the only, I guess that's the only possible way. It's too simple one. Which, which pair would multiply to negative 2 and then add up to negative 1? I, 
Or I heard you say something. I just can... one Perfect. Yeah, the top one would add to negative one. The bottom would add to one. It's just so many ones and twos. It gets confusing. Um, so I'm going to say plus one, minus two. Okay, you have learned this, but it's been forever. I'll put a totally separate problem over here on the left. Technically, these two can sort of cancel. If I put any number in place of x, what does my answer turn out to be? So in your head, pick any number you want, put it in place of x, and what does the answer turn out to be? Say 12? Which could 12? Oh, wow. Did somebody just say pi? Christ. It still, it still works, but you're probably not doing that one in your head. Um, yeah, most of you probably picked one or two or something. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so you end up getting, like, say if you pick one, you end up getting four on the top and negative four on the bottom. No matter what number you pick, this happens every time except for five. Well, if I have two minus x and x minus two, they actually can cancel with each other. That was a bad cancel line. They can actually cancel with each other, and it leaves a negative one. <laughs> what? Yeah. And nothing else can cancel, so we have x times negative 1 over x plus 1. So it looks weird, but if you have factors that are reversed, they can cancel and it leaves a negative 1. For some reason, this usually doesn't click as much, but it, it actually works every time just because, like, if you put a number in place of x, it works. There's different ways I could show it, but I'd probably just make it confusing. Okay, are we ready for the last one? I think we're on our last example. We're, what? That was it? All right, we're done. Uh, the homework is in Schoology. <clears throat> According, since I'm recording, I'll say the homework is in Schoology. And uh, we'll put it in right now.